G'day everyone, welcome to a special edition of Fix It Fingers Woodworking. October the 2nd, last year, 2018, was the first time I published anything to YouTube and pretty much coincides with what I'm going to call my woodworking anniversary. It was when I really got serious about taking this up as a hobby and today we're going to quickly go through three things about what I've learned over the past year, namely going to be the workshop, We'll take a quick look at where things are 12 months on since I started developing this sort of play area for myself on the weekends. Talk about YouTube a little bit and talk about the projects that I've actually managed to achieve over 12 months. So, going to be the yak, hang around, see what's been happening here at Fix It Fingers and a little bit of a sneak preview of what's going to come up in the next 12 months. Let's start with the projects. So before I kicked off YouTube, I really hadn't built anything. I had almost no experience and obviously no experience in making YouTube videos. But as far as the woodwork goes, under here, this box which is full of the guinea pig's hay and this little assembly area were the only things of wood that I had designed and constructed, if you can call it designed. Got my list down here, let's see what we managed to get through. So, firstly, you've got the pegboard sitting just behind me here. The multifunction workbench, which has got the router table, the tilt router table, the jigsaw inverted insert, and the disc sander as well. Coin run money box, which I made for my niece and nephew, Stephen and Friday. They haven't managed to destroy it, so happy with that, with five-year-olds and a toy, still in good nick, down the line. The giant Oz path tag holder, which was the first thing I made for myself and my first hardwood project over there. The wifey's ukulele stand, which is also still kicking along upstairs. She still uses that every single day. What else we got on here? The plant boxes. They have proved to be weatherproof. They're out on a veranda, but they only get the water from the watering of the plants. But they're holding up really well too. The barrier above my garage door. Well, no one's broken in yet, so I suppose we'll call that a success. My first run of mass production path tag holders. Should have grabbed a few of those, get the photo instead. And then my second run of mass produced path tag holders. We had the square ones and we had the mini Australia shaped ones too. Bit of a carpentry job over at my parents' place. We renovated the rear veranda and built some steps, which was the real woodworky, challenging part of that. Again, they're holding up well. Uh, Dad's even got them painted, so hopefully, good number of years of life going to be in that particular project. What else we got here? Oh, the Ausgeo Mustard Proxy. Sad I don't have that anymore. It's one of the coolest things that I built, but it of course was given away as a prize at the 2019 Ausgeo Muster down in Wollongong. My jointer. Take a peek at that too. It'll become an invaluable tool. I've built quite a few tools actually over the past year. Getting started, always going to be the way. And the ones that I have just finished. My cabinets, and my shelves and drawer units. That'll be the next video that I'll put up shortly now that they are done. So that sounded like a lot, but there's actually only 15 real sort of projects there. Just a lot of them had numerous stages and bits and pieces, but that's better than one a month in terms of major projects, which for a part-time hobby, I'm pretty damn happy with that. Obviously, my woodworking skills have come a little way since the beginning. It's already quite cringeworthy going back and watching how much I struggled to make this pegboard, but that's what this channel is all about. It's been great because I managed to start it at the same time I picked up woodworking as a hobby. And if you have the time and patience, you can go back and watch the whole 12 months to where how I went from here to here. I'm pretty proud of what I've managed to achieve over this time period as a complete novice to a slightly less than complete novice. I'd like to give a few shout outs to people who have inspired me and educated me on YouTube. The two in particular, Steve Ramsey from Woodworking for Me Immortals. Honestly guys, if you like me and you are just kicking off this woodworking game, he is one of the best resources on the interwebs that you can find. Check out his YouTube channel. And another special mention I'd like to do is shout out to Vic at Down Under Woodworks. Make sure you check him. He's not really an educational channel per se, but he was definitely one of the more down-to-earth woodworkers that got me inspired and that I go to for hints and tips that are now up to date. And if you just want some Australian wood porn, then check out uh, Pask Makes, Neil Paskin. Uh, far beyond anything I'll probably be able to achieve. Again, he's not an educator, he is an artist really. 
uh, and he is a great resource for getting a slightly even higher end of build for a lot of the things that he does. Speaking of YouTube, I'm in this for the funsies. Obviously, I'm not trying to grow a channel here. I'm not out for breakout videos or anything like that. I have to learn the craft of editing and filming and doing those sorts of things along the way with my woodworking. And honestly, that has been quite fun. But anyone who started this caper will realize editing videos takes a lot of bloody time and effort. So there's just as many hours almost sitting on the couch upstairs than there is down here making sawdust when it comes to getting something on YouTube. I have learned one really important lesson in terms of the watchability of your YouTube, if you are thinking of getting into making this or you just started out, multi-parters. Unless there's a really good logical reason to do so, try to keep your edits down to one single shoot. I like to wrap it on a bit, obviously, and early on, every single one of my projects, I would explain everything that I was doing more to myself than anyone else but it doesn't make for the best viewing. And going back and re-watching my long 40, 50 minute sort of one project videos, I'm gonna try and avoid to do that in the future. And if you are doing this for entertainment's sake, really keeping your videos under 15 minutes, even closer to 10, would be better if you want people to sit there and sit through them. How have I done? Well, if I'm gonna judge it on these things, we've got 48 videos out, which is nearly one a week, including this one, and that's pretty bloody remarkable, really. 72 subscribers, look, it's obviously not very many, to be honest, but I don't really care. You might have noticed that not one of my videos have I ever done the good old like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, blah, blah, blah. Not that there's anything wrong with that, and for people trying to grow a channel rapidly, I'm sure that probably is very important, but I'm not. If people like a video, they're gonna like it. If people wanna to listen to me rabbit on every week, they're gonna subscribe, and if they wanna see a notification, they're gonna hit the bell. Having said that, as this is a special occasion, I will do it just this once, that if you've gotten through this video quite so far, and you've been following a few of my bits and pieces, and you haven't subscribed yet, all means, please go and click that sub button, mostly for vanity's sake, because if I get to 100, then I can get rid of the yucky numbers and letters and random gibberish, and I can actually have YouTube slash fix it fingers. That would be nice. Beyond that, I don't really have any goals for this. I'm doing it for my own entertainment. If you guys happen to get entertained, then that's a happy bonus too. Really, it's just a vlog. I am documenting my learning journey, and as you probably realize, the learning journey in woodwork never stops. However, one little tip, review videos. If you take a quick look through my playlist, you'll quickly notice there is one slight anomaly. That bloody Wagner spray painting of my ceiling video. Oh my god, that was so painful to do. But, well, check it out. As we speak, it's got over 4,000 views on it. My average video is about 20 to 30 when I just make something from the people who I've gotten to know. So, there's a lesson for you. If you want to do videos, don't make stuff. Everyone makes stuff. You can see 50,000 blokes making Craig Jig cabinets if you really want to. If you want to get people to watch, then do a review. Do an unboxing. I really am not a fan of unboxings, but for God's sakes, every time you see one uploaded, they get thousands of clicks on them. And honestly, it makes sense. Most people are going onto YouTube to go, how do I do this? Or what is the new Makita drill like? They're gonna be searching those sorts of things. They're not gonna be searching, I wanna watch some bogan in a shed making stuff out of wood. What's coming up next? Well, I've got a few gaps and holes to fill. I've got a few tools that I want to invest in over the next 12 months. The big one, is replacing this assembly bench with a miter saw station. Not sure when I'll get around to it, but getting a new miter saw and getting it housed in a proper stand is going to be one of my next big goals and really increase the productivity of what I can do here. And of course, continue to grow my actual hobby business, selling path tag holders and other geocaching related things. Do a quick workshop tour, won't take very long, just to round things out, and then we'll call that a day. Okay, let's take a quick tour of my very tiny workshop, which sadly has to have a car in it most of the time. The first thing I'll mention is if you are going to get into this YouTube filming caper, there are two things you want. One is a tripod in order to hold your phone or camera, and the other is a decent microphone. 
I shoot on a Galaxy S7 and honestly, it does pretty well. I'm shooting full HD and the quality of the video is not something I've ever complained about. The sound quality, however, you'll probably pick the video about halfway through this year when I picked up a Rode Video Micro, which is what I'm now using. But the other problem I have is the echoiness of being in a brick and concrete garage does make for a bit of tricky sound quality. But as far as my YouTube filming setup, that's pretty much all I've got. The heart of my workshop is my multi-function table, which is a Ryobi cutting bench to which I have built this tabletop. The hole you've seen before, it is a router table, it is an inverted jigsaw, it is a disc sander, it does a lot of different things for me. I don't envisage getting a table saw anytime soon as I don't really have anywhere to put it, but this gets me through pretty much everything that I want it to do. Moving along, we've got my dust extraction. A little project I want to get onto actually sometime in the near future is a cyclone for that thing that will improve its capabilities quite a lot. But honestly, I am in a garage. The car sits out there when I'm working. And whenever I want to get the dust out at the end of the day, I have got the Makita blower, which just ejects it quite efficiently. The pegboard of pain, which was my first real project, I suppose. That's my new K5 Craig jig, which I won from Craig Australia recently and was very, very chuffed about. This jointer, I built it specifically for one project, but I use it all the time now. Being able to plane off things like slightly ill-fitting drawers does make life very, very easy. Here's your first good look at my new cabinet and drawer system. Lovely cleat under here, no hardware needed. They're not even full yet. I've got lots of space to grow and expand into. Up top, I do a bit of storage for things that I don't use terribly often, like the Wagner. And in the middle here, I think I'm going to build a clamp rack and get some of these clamp off. Honestly, it's so much cleaner under here now that I've got space to put the tools because I was able to get rid of some of the crap. Sadly though, I had to destroy my old fix-it fingers sign and I've got to work out a better place for that light now that it has gone from its old home. But that is my work area. That's pretty much where all the magic happens. I am, of course, a big fan of Makita, but I do have a few Ryobi things too in the corded tool variety. Honestly, it just shows you, you don't need a whole bunch of big bench tools. And at the moment, apart from the miter saw, I can't see myself needing any tools in the near future. And my router kit and scrap storage bin. That's pretty much it. As I said, not a lot to see in the Fix-It Fingers workshop because I operate on such a small scale. Random wood storage all around the walls and my bike, which doesn't get used as much as I've moved much closer to home for work recently. A couple of other things just hiding around. This is mostly non-woodworking related storage. Alrighty guys, well that's the Fix-It Fingers workshop as far as it stands in October 2019. 12 months since I started this crazy woodwork and YouTube journey. I hope you have got some interesting bits and pieces out of today and had a bit of a sneak peek into the background of how things work in terms of my filming and my construction processes and how I've developed over the past 12 months, which is why I am filming these videos. It's gonna be interesting to see what comes out of 2019, what's left of it, and 2020. We'll see in 12 months where the workshop has grown to and what I'm using, what I've acquired, what I've gotten rid of. But for now, that's all I've got for today. I hope you enjoyed this rather long rambling video. As I said, back to regular project work next week as we do the build video for those shelves and drawer units. For now, thanks for hanging in here right until the very end. For the last and only time this year, if you haven't joined the video community of Fix-It Fingers yet, then Instagram, Facebook, and of course, subscribing here on YouTube. It'd be great to see you around and in the comments section. Thanks everybody. Catch you next time and looking forward to another 12 months. Adios.